Welcome to ITS Georgia. Uh, my name is Jenny. I'm with Kimley Horn. I'm the president for this year. Um, before we get started, we, what we always like to do is kind of welcome our first time attendees, including students. So if you're here, you can go ahead and stand up and briefly introduce yourself. I know I see a few new faces. With Segura with Wake Promise, uh, I'm the new application engineer uh, working with Jane. Right. I'm Jane Holt with Parsons. I work with Roberto Perez. I'm a student at Georgia Tech and I'm the secretary of ITS at IDP. So, Anyone else? Well, welcome everybody. We're glad that you're here. Um, another thing we like to do is if there's been any recent job changes or promotions within the industry that you kind of wanted to announce to the group. No one? All right. Well, we'll go ahead and jump in into our committee updates. Um, membership uh, invoices were sent out. Uh, Non-member rights are, have been applying. If you go ahead and join you'll get the membership discounted rate for the ITS 5C Summit, which is coming up on the first week of October. Uh, networking and social, where's Whitney? There she is. Okay, um, we're gonna have a social, the registration hasn't been sent out yet, but October 25th, we're gonna do a trivia event. Um, it's held uh, in Smyrna, so it's fairly convenient to get to. We go to October 25th, you should see registration for that come out in the next week or two. Awesome, thanks. Um, we have an outreach event coming up with the Gwinnett County Public Schools. It's the Career Connections. It's basically a career fair for 8th grade students in the STEM schools. It will be on Tuesday, October 16th at Infinite Energy Center from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we have a, a group of us going. I know myself and Winter and Bill, I think Ken and Alvin will be there. Uh, we have a Tesla vehicle, we're going to put up uh, the 511 on a TV, kind of show them some cameras, maybe even get a light board out there. So if you're interested in helping out, we would love for you to join us. Um, just come and talk to me after today's meeting and I'll give you more details on that. Uh, scholarships, uh, D. Taylor is our committee chair for that. He's unable to be here today, but scholarship applications have been sent out, all you students out there. They are due by October 14th. So go to our ITS Georgia website, and I believe it's posted there, right, Bill? Yeah, so the application's on there as well. The 2018 Best of ITS Awards. So our next monthly meeting, we won't have one in October because of our conference, will be in November. On November 14th will be our award ceremony. Um, applications for that are being accepted. The deadline is the end of this week. So Saturday, September 29th is the deadline for that. We have... Public agency, private agency, volunteer, project awards, and things like that. When you go to the ITS Georgia website, itsgeorgia.org, um, you'll actually have a pop-up pop right up when you hit that website. So you can click on that, and it takes you to the link to send in nominations. Pretty quick process, up to 250 words of, of, to nominate any projects or people in your own agencies, outside agencies. You can even nominate yourself. So... Highly encourage you all to get those in by Saturday. Time Task Force. Greg, you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah. Uh, Lake, uh, the next month, October 28th through 30th, Time Task Force, the, uh, the Travis Hall Institute of Management, and the Lake Travis Hall Institute of
so we George ITS we are a sponsor of the conference and we have endorsed uh, their open roads policy so it should be on our that's on our website as well if you want more details on that but Yeah, you can take a picture of it and have the info. And that is an annual conference, so it was a little last minute this year. My apologies, but if you, it's typically around the same time in in Georgia somewhere, so it's close by and it's a, a good rate to get some of those PDH hours in as well. Um, TU Automotive, is Billy here today? I didn't see him. He's not here today, but TU Automotive, if you want to let me guys know, is hosting their Connected Fleets Conference. It's at the end of November. It'll be November 27th and 28th in Buckhead. So again, that's TU Automotive Connected Fleets Conference. If you're interested in that, let me know. I can get you in contact with Billy and he can get you more details on that conference. Um, ITS 5C Summit. So this is uh, the big 5C Summit that we're holding in conjunction with Florida, the US, Georgia, North and South Carolina, and the Grits area, which is what, Alabama, T Tennessee, and Louisiana. So it's a big conference, basically the Southeast all getting together. It's in Jacksonville, Florida. It's going to be October 7th through the 10th at the Hyatt Regency there. So conference and hotel registrations are open. So there'll be a, a lot of ITS Georgia folks down there. We would love for you to join. Be a lot of technical and then also some social and networking events as well. Lastly, a lot of announcements today. We have our election nominees. We have Winter. She's our committee chair for elections come up. We're going to let uh, the nominees for this year kind of introduce themselves and give a brief one to two minute talk of introduce themselves. And winter. Hey guys. So yes, we have nominations. There's six positions that are coming up to um, for people to be nominated. There are quite a number of people who are not here, so I'm going to state some names of people who you know could not make it, and then also. I'll be reading a few, so that'll be interesting because I have not proofread it. <laughs> so I'll, we'll see how that goes. The polls do open tomorrow, so that's something to think about. There is one person from each company or organization that votes, so you need to find that person within your organization. Get, let them know who you would like to vote for. Maybe it can be an inner office thing where they're putting their votes in somewhere. Um, the list of people who could not be here today would be David Swells with Carlson Construction Services, Derek Crowder with City of Roswell, John Paul Braden with Carlson Construction Services, Kofi, I'm not even going to try his last Wahisi. name, Wahisi, maybe, um, with Atlanta Regional Commission, you all know Kofi, so just go by Kofi, um, and then Kristen Phillips with Gwinnett County, she was previously on the ITS board, that is one thing she wanted to mention, um, and she was the secretary for a number of years. So that's something um, to throw out there, too. I'm now going to read an essay <laughs> from Shannon Fain. I, Shannon Fain, request that this be read by the ITS Georgia member that sounds the most like Robert De Niro, the, the good fellows De Niro, not the taxi driver psycho De Niro. Hey, everyone. Sorry I couldn't be there today, but I had a prior commitment at the same time doing one of my favorite things, volunteering. As such, I'm honored to be nominated for the ITS Georgia Board, where I hope to keep up this volunteer spirit. Most of you know me, and I have probably worked on some project with just about all of you as well in my 16 plus years of experience. But for those of you that don't know me, here's a quick summary. I've done it all. I did the college thing at the University of Tennessee Knoxville for undergrad and my master's, and then I went to work for five years at one of the leading transportation research entities in the country, ITRE at NC State in Raleigh, North Carolina where we researched and performed studies on a wide range of transportation technology. The project that I led and managed that I was most proud of was the creation of a completely new ITS level of service software program for NCDOT. While at NC State, I also taught and made it halfway through my doctorate before 2007 when I got an offer I couldn't refuse, an offer to come to the city I always wanted to live in, Atlanta. During my 11 years in Atlanta, I have completed work all over the spectrum of transportation from the setup and timing of the first ramp meters to work to work on the Beltline and its associated developments 
from typical traffic impact studies to the collection and use of big data for transportation and planning efforts, from multi-county transit projects to the development of university long-range plans, from TMC consulting contracts to studies looking at the latest in pedestrian technology and so on. Hey, what can I say? I like variety. Kick, kick in the, the De Niro extra hard. Y'all can just tell him I did that, even though this is being recorded. <laughs> I have worked on the public side, on the consulting side, and on the technology side. I think my background naturally lends itself to be very well-rounded, as not only have I seen each side of most topics, I have been on each side. My volunteer efforts since I've been in Atlanta include serving on committees and or boards for the Georgia ITE, Southern District ITE, Gulf Region ITS, TRB, Atlanta Bicycle Coalition, Piedmont Park Conservancy, National Trust for Historic Preservation, Atlanta Sports Council, Piedmont Alliance for Quality Growth, among others. I don't sleep, ever. Seriously, I don't. In closing, I think the next few years will be exciting, making that very exciting and critical for the future of transportation. Remembering the past will be vitally important as we advance into the future. There are going to be a lot of expectations, a lot of theories, and a lot of faith, and on the flip side, a lot of weariness when it comes to transportation technology. I would love to volunteer my time to help lead the state of Georgia and our society as we go through these exciting times. Thank you. So that was Shannon Fain. Thank you. Now, let me pull up the text because some have rolled in through there. The next one will be Billy Stalkup. He's actually up for re-election. Um, he is sorry he could not be here today. He's trying to get back from North Georgia and unfortunately got held up this morning. Billy has really enjoyed the past two years serving as an active board member for ITS Georgia. Volunteering as committee chair for our ITS Georgia monthly meetings, he has worked hard to bring thought-provoking speakers, innovative topics, and new perspectives into our monthly meetings. If elected for another two-year term, Billy is committed to actively serve ITS Georgia in whatever role is needed, bringing innovative leadership and new perspectives into our industry. Thank you so much for this opportunity to serve such a great organization. And one more I get to read before I allow others to read for themselves. Um, let's see, Tom Ubell, he is also up for re-election. He is currently on the board. He um, is a local agency representative, but a consultant mindset. He has been, he has dedicated to the advancement of ITS in Georgia for the past decade. Committed to advancing the case for ITS with government officials as a cost-effective option to increasingly expensive road capacity improvement. <laughs> He's convinced that the optimization possible with ITS are also part of a larger mindset of improving maintenance of our infrastructure. ITS Georgia has an opportunity and obligation to support local agencies in these efforts, and he feels he could help with that. So with that, now we'll bring up people so you don't have to listen to me. Let's see. Next nominee would be Chuck Bailey, KCI Technologies. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, you got to come up because we're videoing. Everybody come up. Just, yes, we're on live. We need all the votes you can get. Not everybody can be here. Show them your good side. That's right. What side is that? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think you just work both. Just work both sides. Yes. Well, thank you for the, whoever nominated me. Thank you for the nomination. I would uh, be privileged to serve on the board. Actually, I served on one of the initial boards back in uh, 2000, I believe. Uh, when, the, when ITS Georgia was first getting started. So it would be great to almost come full circle. Uh, go back on a little bit about myself. I spent 20 years with Gwinnett County uh, as a traffic engineering division director for the last 10, and I've been with KCI about a year now. Uh, you know, ITS was, uh, was big in Gwinnett, and I know Tom and the folks there are still promoting it and probably have, uh, I want to say, probably the best, one of the best local systems uh, in the area. But it would be a pleasure. I appreciate the support. Thank you. All right, next up is Mary Tumati with SCI. Um, hi, everyone. Most of you already know me, but haven't. Mary Tumati, and I'm running for the board, and thank you for, for nominating me as well. IATS really excites me, and that's what I'll bring to the board. I think it's, it's exciting to bring that technology, and I started off on the ops floor of the TMC in the thick of it. I get to use all the devices, and I, get, I got to grow up have, seeing that impact on the streets and on the roads. I got to see what several of you had done, and that's what I bring. And I've also had several leadership opportunities, and I've done that through college and high school. 
and I'm our manager at SEI as well, and so I do bring that leadership experience into ITS. I also have been working with traffic signals with RTOP, and I've been doing things with TMC, and I've worked with different vendors, and with SEI, it's a smaller firm, so I get to kind of, with a small business, you get to do a little bit of everything, and so I really got to touch vendors and look, work with local agencies and work with GDOT and work with all those different groups. And I think it's really important that ITS as a group and as an organization that is made up as members, not individuals, you know, and to really have that perspective of different types of organizations on the board. So please vote for me. Thanks. Thanks. All right, next up is Roberto Perez from Parsons. Good afternoon, my name is Roberto Perez with Parsons, and I want to thank everyone, uh, and I'm honored, to be honest with you. But for those that do know me, I actually do live in Georgia, um, so there might be some questions about why I'm here in the state today, um, but I do spend some time in Georgia. In any case, uh, real quickly about my background, I've been with ITS, and, and I guess the origins of Parsons, Dell, Can, and AT, since about 2000, 2001, and I've been in and around the uh, ITS Georgia and Georgia Navigator program since then. I've been fortunate to support the South and other states as well from an ITS perspective and looking forward to try to participate and bring some of that um, knowledge, expertise, best practices, learnings across all the states to kind of make it a better program for all. So I'm privileged, honored, and I want to thank you. All right, next up is Tom Glicker with Kimley Horn. Not sure if I said that right. That's right. Move. We gotta get this going. Uh, hi there. My name is Tom Glicker. I work with Kimley Horn. I'm sure I'm a new face to a lot of you. I moved to Georgia about a year ago, last August. Uh, so I'm looking to get involved in the organization. Uh, I work primarily on our top two and Ritzo Region Two contracts through GDOT. Um, I've served in multiple leadership roles up in Illinois, which is where I moved from, including ITE. Uh, I've served as a conference co-chair, uh, finance co-chair, so I'm just looking to get more involved down here. I've enjoyed my time uh, with ITS meetings so far. Just looking to get more involved, and thank you for your consideration. All right, we have two more. Next up is Natalie schmuz Mingleka. Yes. <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Okay, can everybody just close their eyes real quick? Because I'm nervous this is going to give away my surprise. Oh, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. You can open them. Hi, uh, for those of you, of you that don't know me, my name is Natalie smuz Cook, um, or just Natalie is fine as well. Um, and I am hoping that you will consider me uh, for board on the ITS Georgia um, board today. And I'm just really excited for where we are as an industry, and I'm excited for where we're going in the future. Um, I am also so thankful to be part of this community. I moved here a little over a year ago and feel like you all have, you know, welcomed me with open arms um, and just really thankful for that um, and an outlet to share what I'm passionate about uh, in ITS. I've been um, in ITS for 18 years um, and am really excited to see where we're headed. Um, and so it was part of preparation and thinking forward through this. Um, I was reflecting back on my previous kind of election experiences. And I will say most of the most recent ones were either like things where like you, you are going to be this. And I said, <laughs> okay. Or I ran um, unopposed and that was pretty easy. <laughs> um, so I had to dig a little further back 
and thought through senior superlatives, which if you remember, most of the times just happen. However, in my case, I had my eye on a prize. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I really, you know, just shared what I was passionate about in hopes that they would elect me for best dancer. That's right. <laughs> um, and I did, just as a quick note, I did challenge somebody to a dance-off to make this happen. So I'm serious. Let's, let's I hope you all it. brought your cardboard. Um, <laughs> and so, so to bring it back to where we are today, essentially, um, I'm passionate about ITS, so you should consider me for the board. Um, and then thinking even further back, for student council in high school. I ran on the platform, it was a good day. When you voted for Natalie Smuds for treasurer, um, that was when Ice Cubes, it was a good day. Song was really popular. <laughs> so again, so to bring it back, I hope that you consider me for ITS Georgia board. Uh, it was a good day when you do this. And I'm endorsed by Ice Cube. Thank you very much. And, and what I heard is that she will be doing a dance-off if she is nominated. So I heard Just that. Just challenged. <laughs> not by me. All right, the last but not least is Whitney Nottage with NLI, and she is up for re-election, as she's been serving on the board also. All right, thank you, Winter. Hey, everybody. Um, I think most, I know most of the people in this room, but for those of you that don't know me, my name is Whitney Nottage. I work for Intellite. Um, I have been in the industry for 11 years. I spent five years in Florida, and I've been in Georgia since 2012. Um, I've done ITS, traffic, all that jazz. Um, I consider myself a traffic engineer by trade, but I am currently Intellite's manager of services and support. So I'm very involved with the state and local agencies. Um, anytime someone in Georgia is looking for help, technical support on their traffic signal technology, I'm usually somewhere in there involved with helping with that. So I'm very passionate about traffic signals and ITS and technology on our roads, um, improving the roads, making them safer and more efficient. Um, and that's one of the things that I like to bring to ITS Georgia. Um, like I said, I've been involved with ITS Georgia since I moved here in 2012, and I've been on the board for two years. Um, I have served on the scholarship committee. I'm very passionate about helping students, and I've also served as your social chair, so I'll be with fun events. Um, I served on the 5C summit committees. Um, I'm also heavily involved in ITE, and we work a lot very hard to make sure those chapters are partnered together and working hard and I'll continue to do that if you vote for me. So I would appreciate everyone's votes. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for coming up here and speaking. And again, the polls open tomorrow. There is one person in your office that will vote. And if you do need help finding out who that is, then just get in touch with one of us board members and we'll find out for you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, one more announcement I forgot to make earlier. For our 2019 annual meeting, obviously next year, we've already started uh, planning that. It's going to actually be in Athens next year. But we are currently looking for a conference chair for that um, annual meeting. Typically, it's a consulting firm, but we're not opposed to any vendors that may be interested or anything like that. So if you are interested in that, um, please let me know. The position is wide open. So. Is that a paid position? <laughs> 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 no, no, there, are, yeah, it, there are some benefits that come with it. I think we typically do a few uh, registrations. You get a sponsorship, things like that. We'll be, the board is uh, meeting in late November to do all of our planning for next year. So we'll sit down and really nail down what comes with that. But um, there definitely are some benefits, plus your name is out there, you're on all the materials, and it's it's actually really good networking. Back in, so I would start with Kimley Horn in mid-2012, and we agreed to be the conference chair for 2013, and that was kind of how I got my foot in, in the door to get involved with ITS. I met a ton of people 
um, through that. And then actually that year I ran for secretary and the rest is history. So it's a great way to get involved. You work hand in hand with the board. The, the uh, conference chair member is usually at some of the board meetings to just kind of give us updates and things like that. So um, you'll be working with the board. We already have a lot of the venues secured and a lot of the big details, deposits and contracts signed. So this would be more of figuring out some of the smaller details like picking menus and securing maybe a last minute caterer here or there for the entertainment nights and things like that. So it's a great networking experience for you individually and for your company. So if you're interested, just uh, let me know. Let me know or Bill know. Just get in touch with one of us and we'll talk it through with you if you have any questions. So today's sponsor is actually Traffic Vision. I saw Ray. There he is. You want to come up and they actually sponsored today, so they provided the lunch and helped us with the venue and all of that. So we appreciate it. Cool. Thanks. Well, I'll make this quick. Um, I feel inept because I didn't have a, an essay, which is pretty cool, or, or a really cool PowerPoint. I just have a 45 minute PowerPoint here. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is family, and we're so glad to be a part of this. Um, when I first got involved with ITS, my start was with ITS Georgia, and um, we've been involved ever since, and we feel like you know, we're part of this family. We, our home office is in Clemson, South Carolina. We're right up the road. Yep, go Tigers. And um, we have a lot of people that work there that are tech people, too, as well. But um, we're glad to be here. We're glad to be a part of this. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about our technology. We turn cameras into sensors. Um, and in turn, our, your cameras will start giving you real-time data and real-time incident detection. Glad to be working with GDOT, and I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. There's a lot of great camera companies out there, and we just turn them into sensors. And there's also a lot of great sensors out there that we work great, well with. So that's it. Let's move on. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Mm -hmm. All right, and Matt is going to come up and introduce our speaker for today. Thank you again to Traffic Vision. Uh, great to have him as a sponsor. Thank you for lunch. Uh, it's my honor to introduce Scott Haggard. Uh, Scott serves as the Director of Government and External Affairs for the Atlanta Regional Transit Link Authority, ATL, uh, as well as CERTA and uh, Greta, where he manages government affairs and external strategic relationships of the organizations. This position provides leadership for building and sustaining effective relationships with elected and appointed government officials, partner agencies, and key constituencies and influencers. Scott has had an extensive career as a government and public, uh, excuse me, in government and public policy. He previously served as government affairs manager for uh, the ARC, where he played a significant role in helping to pass landmark transportation, transit, natural resources, and aging legislation at the state and federal levels. Prior to his tenure at ARC, Scott was with MARTA as director of government relations served as a former Gwinnett County Commissioner Chairman, a Special Assistant for External Affairs, and worked in Washington, D.C. and Georgia for two former members of Congress. Scott holds a Master's of Public Administration degree from the, the George Washington University and a dual Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and Journalism from the University of Georgia. We won't hold you that against you. <laughs> he lives in Peachtree Corners in Gwinnett County. Please join me in welcoming Scott Hacker. Thank you all. It's good to be here. Uh, I appreciate the invitation. Uh, how many of you were at the Georgia ITE conference in St. Simons? Okay. So some of you have heard this before, uh, but there's a few there's a few few nuggets uh, that are new in here that you might enjoy. Um, so I am the, as was mentioned, I'm the director of government and external affairs for uh, the new ATL Atlanta Regional Transit Link Authority. Uh, how many of you have, have heard of us and are familiar with us? That's pretty good. So we've only been in existence for a few months, so that's, I consider that an uh, impressive achievement that you know, most people in the room know what we are or have heard of us. Uh, so I just started there on June 1st. Uh, we just became, we actually just became an agency on May 3rd. So technically I was the number one employee of the new ATL. 
I tell people that I was number one in number and also stature. So, uh, so we're going to start. We're going to talk a little bit about transportation. I thought y'all might enjoy this one. That continues to be a problem today, I think. Uh, but if we don't go that far back, uh, if we go back, there is a good history of transit in the Atlanta region. I, I think a lot of you probably are familiar with a lot of this. Uh, but if you think about how far transit goes back in Atlanta, it really goes back to 1871 when the streetcars first started operating in Atlanta. And if you look at in 1926, we had 96 million trips on streetcars in the city of Atlanta. And you compare that to today, you know, MARTA today uh, has about 130 million trips uh, per year. So, you know, it's, it's staggering how many people were taking transit in the 1920s. Uh, the 1940s was when, you know, as we know, after the advent of the automobile and everything, that uh, transit really kind of took a backseat to cars. Um, but if you think about how, far, how long people have been talking about having a regional transit authority, uh, uh, which the ATL now is, if you go back to 1961, that was when ARC first issued a report that said we need rapid rail. Uh, and they suggested 60 miles worth of rapid rail. Uh, we currently have a little bit less than, uh, let's see, I think 40 miles. Um, but at the time, it would only cost $200 million to build out 60 miles of rapid rail in the Atlanta region. If only we had done that then. Um, today, heavy rail, which is what MARTA is, costs about $200 million to $250 million per mile to build. So MARTA was created in 1965, 1971. Uh, the 1% sales tax for MARTA passed in Fulton and DeKalb counties. Um, first rail line uh, opened in 1979. And so the most recent, actually, you know, opening for MARTA has been since 1999. So it's been almost 20 years since there's been any new development on the MARTA system. So if we think about transit in particular, going back just a few years, uh, the conversation around transit really started to turn a corner, I would say, in the last five, six years. And if you think about it, in 2014, uh, that's when Clayton County voted to join MARTA. So that was the first expansion of the MARTA system in um, over 40 years. Um, in 2015, when the Georgia General Assembly passed HB 170, which was the bill that increased the motor fuel tax um, to a few cents that allow GDOT to raise an additional billion dollars a year for transportation. Uh, as part of that discussion, the General Assembly included $75 million in transit projects um, that were distributed statewide on a competitive basis to different transit agencies that applied for grants. So that was kind of the first time that the legislature sort of stepped foot into transit. Um, in 2016, that was when the General Assembly passed the bill that allowed Martin to have the additional half cent uh, sales tax increase, um, which was voted on that year, and which of course passed, and Marta is currently in discussions with the city on how that money is going to be used, the more Marta program they're calling it. And then in 2017, there was a study committee created in the legislature about transit governance and funding, which ended up um, or while all that was going on, we heard about companies all over the metro area talking about we need to be near transit because that's what our workers are asking for. So these are just a few of the companies that located headquarters here or moved headquarters um, and citing transit as a particular need for their workforce. <clears throat> so at the same time, ARC, where I used to work, we do a, I say we, I still say we, but uh, we do a survey every year, and this has been done for now five years, uh, called the Metro Atlanta Speaks Survey, where we just sort of benchmark the same questions every year. It is a survey of over 5,000 people, so it's scientifically uh, valid, and it's over the 13 county region, so it's very broad and has a good uh, sample of, of the way people feel. Uh, when we ask the question, is transit important to the future of the region, uh, consistently it's around 74% that say very important and almost 20% say somewhat important. So residents really get the fact that transit is an important component of our future. And also when you ask the question, uh, what do you think is the best long-term fix for traffic problems in Atlanta? And you give them options like expand public transit, improve roads and highways, develop communities where you can live close to work or do nothing. Um, 
consistently that almost half of the people say expand transit, uh, which is significantly more than improving roads and highways, although we all know that that's important as well. So we really need a multimodal solution to all these problems. So if you look at before House Bill 930, which was what created a, uh, ATL, you had at least 10 different transit systems in the Atlanta region. And over the 13 counties, which is the same jurisdiction that Greta covers, the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority, which was uh, created to uh, sort of operate transit express buses, which is what we do in conjunction with Sergo now. If you combine all that together, that's how you get the ATL. And so the bill was passed on March 29th of this year, which was the last day of session. The governor signed it into law on May 3rd. And what we're really about is being a unifying entity for the Atlanta region that ensures coordinated transit planning and funding and increased transparency around transit activities. And so I'll explain a little bit about all of that. If you look at the bill that was created, uh, House Bill 930, you can think about the ATL in five buckets, regional governance, regional transit planning, transit funding, uh, branding of transit assets, and then how all of this interacts with existing transit operators. So I'll talk a little bit about each of those. So for the regional governance structure, um, which is uh, one of the more complicated things in the bill, um, we are going to have a board of directors. We don't have one complete yet. Uh, I'll get into that. But the board of directors is structured like this. We're going to have 16 members on the board. Um, the governor and lieutenant governor and speaker all have appointments. And they actually announced their appointments recently. I have a slide to show you who they are shortly. But the governor appoints the chair, and then the lieutenant governor and the speaker of the house appoint two members each. The GDOT commissioner will serve as a non-voting member. And then we'll have 10 additional board members that will come from this map. And so each of those members will be elected from that district by a complicated caucus of legislators, county commission chairs, and mayors, which I'll explain. One thing I do want to mention that I uh, forgot to mention just now is that you see on this map, these districts were drawn so that they are crossing county boundaries. The sponsor of the legislation, Representative Tanner, really thought it was important to have people who had a broader perspective than just their county jurisdiction or just their city jurisdiction, because he really wanted people who have a regional mindset. And so that's the reason these districts are drawn this way, um, so that somebody who is representing that district has to think about not just their county, but you know maybe the neighboring county. So for our board members, uh, each board member has to be a resident of the district which he or she represents if they're coming from that uh, district map. The bill also says that they should possess significant experience or expertise in a field that would be beneficial to the ATL. Now that could, you know, that's really all it says. So, you know, that could mean they ride MARTA once a year or, you know, that they actually have some uh, background in transportation or engineering or uh, economic development or any of these things that could be useful to the ATL, that's really going to be up to the people who are doing the electing of the board members to determine what experience is necessary. And then another important component is that nobody who currently holds a state office can serve on our board. So you can't have any state legislators, you can't have any people who are already on a state board like the Royal Congress Center Authority Board or the Georgia Ports Authority or anything like that. Uh, but you can have local elected officials on our board. So it is possible for mayors and county commissioners and, and you know, people like that uh, to serve on the ATL board. And in fact, one of the state appointees uh, is a local elected official. All of our board members have to be appointed no later than December 1st, which is roughly 64 days from now, not that I'm counting. Uh, we just have to make sure that we have a 16-member board by December 1st. And once you see this process, you'll understand why I'm stressed out about it. Um, these were the state appointees that were just announced uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, as you see, the governor appointed as chair Charlie Sutliff, who is, uh, was recently named the director of corporate communication for Georgia Power. And then the lieutenant governor appointed uh, Mark Toro, who developed, uh, if you're familiar with Avalon and North Fulton, uh, and is also involved in the redevelopment of Colony Square downtown and is involved with the development of Revel, which is around the in, uh, Gwinnett Center area, Gwinnett Arena, Infinite Energy Arena around there. And then Teddy Russell, who is uh, president of a landscape group in Gwinnett County. 
And then Speaker Ralston actually appointed Chairman Charlotte Nash from Gwinnett County and then Representative Earl Earhart. So you noticed I mentioned that no state legislators can serve. He is retiring. Uh, and so at the end of his term, which will be January 14th of next year, uh, he will then become an ATL board member. So those are our five of our board members. The remaining 10 have yet to be appointed. And so we're going to use a process uh, that looks like this for appointing those board members. <laughs> it's, uh, it is roughly like that. Because uh, once you see how this works, you'll see why I use that illustration. It's a two-step process. So first, the mayors in each of these 10 districts have to get together, and they had to decide which mayor amongst themselves was going to sit in on the board election and represent the rest of the mayors in the election. So we already did all of these. And so we had 10 of those meetings where we had to send out polls and find out you know, what day people can meet and all that stuff. We finally got all of them together. And they, so each of these districts chose a mayor, and then that mayor will sit in with all these other people uh, to actually elect an ATL board member. Um, and in that step, which is the number two step, so any state legislator whose district is part of this district, as well as any county commission chair whose county is part of this district, and it, the mayor who was selected in the first meeting, and the mayor of Atlanta, if the district includes the mayor of Atlanta, that's the group that will actually elect the ATL board member. So here's an example of how this works. So for District 3, which uh, covers four different counties, Cobb, Fulton, DeKalb, and Gwinnett, there are 10 cities that are represented in that district. So those 10 mayors got together and they selected Rusty Paul from Sandy Springs to represent them in the election. So then in the election, which has already been scheduled for October 24th, uh, there will be 32 people voting on the ATL board member, 17 state representatives, nine state senators, four county commission chairs, Rusty Paul, and Mayor Bottoms from Atlanta. And so those are the 32 people who will decide the ATL board member for District 3. So we get to do this 10 different times in 10 different districts over the next two months. So does anybody want to help me? <laughs> uh, just to give you a sense of the mayors that were selected in this mayoral process, these are the mayors who were picked to represent them in these districts. So you kind of see it's a good uh, cross-representation of mayors from around the district, some larger cities, some smaller cities. Um, so it was a good process, and I think the mayors felt good about the way we did it. This is a sort of a further example to just illustrate more how confusing this is. Uh, Fulton County uh, is actually part of six different districts. So Chairman Pitts actually has to organize the meetings for District 5 and 8, according to the law. But then he also participates as a voter in four other districts. And so if you're a county commission chair in any of these districts, you're going to be very busy, busy with us in the next couple of months. So let's talk about exactly what we are to do as the ATL once we have a board, which is hopefully going to happen on December 1st. Um, the law says that we have to put together a regional transit plan. And so this plan will have a six-year and 20-year time horizon because that corresponds to federal planning guidelines. Um, and it will be developed in consultation with ARC, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization for this region, according to federal law. <clears throat> and not only is it meant to coordinate uh, transit services already out there, but also like any future expansion projects and things of that nature. Um, and importantly, you'll see on the bottom there that after January 1st of next year, uh, any transit project that's part of a referendum that goes to voters, uh, any project has to be included in this regional transit plan that is passed by the ATL. And so that's where sort of the ATL's oversight function over transit comes in. So we also have a funding role. Uh, we, are, we are now officially, uh, beginning October 1st, we will be the designated recipient of all federal funds that go to transit in the Atlanta region. And so that's a designation that the federal government makes, uh, but that the governor has to approve and designate. And so he has approved and designated the ATL to do that function starting October 1st. So that's a role that previously had been served by MARTA for over 40 years. So, and when the ATL was created, we were meant to be sort of the repository of federal and state transit funds. You might be asking yourself, what are state transit funds? Because there are none at this point. Uh, hopefully in the future, uh, there will be some. 
And I think the state is making steps towards investing in transit. As you saw, the 75 million was sort of a first step. Um, and then actually uh, this year, the governor uh, designated $100 million in bonds that will be to the bus rapid transit project that has been proposed for the North Fulton County Corridor. Um, and so that's additional state funding. I think you'll see more funding like that uh, in the future for transit specifically. So one big component of House Bill 930 that was included in, in uh, creating the ATL is that it gives any of the 13 counties that were created, that are part of us, uh, the opportunity to present to their voters a referendum for transit. And it can be a, it's a sales tax for up to 1%, so any increment of 0 0.05, and it can be for up to 30 years. And the reason 30 years is important is if you know about federal transit funding and how that works, uh, in order to be competitive for federal grants uh, for transit, they require at least a minimum of 20 years of operating funding to be shown in your, in your sort of funding plan. And it's important to have that 30 years because obviously you can't start, you know, you're not going to operate in year one. So you have to have a long time frame in order to be competitive for federal funding. As I mentioned, any project is part of a referendum uh, on a sales tax. Uh, has to be approved by the ATL and part of that regional transit plan. And one unique thing about the House Bill 930 is that it wasn't just for the Atlanta region, uh, this funding opportunity. If you're a county outside of the 13, anywhere in the state, you can partner with a neighboring county and put a referendum on the ballot for a transit sales tax. And so there are counties uh, outside the region that are actively exploring that, such as in Athens and Savannah, um, and we may actually see a move next year to try to allow single counties to do that outside the Atlanta region. And so that was an interesting thing. Uh, one thing I'll mention, in the law it says, it uses the words, um, a neighboring county. Uh, the mayor of Macon, I was at a meeting and he said, you know, I wonder if we can just, uh, if it can just be a neighborly county rather than a neighboring <laughs> county. Because I think he said, he was thinking he was going to have some difficult some difficulty getting his adjoining counties to uh, get together with him. Um, there were some unique provisions that dealt with specific counties. Fulton County has the opportunity to levy a 0.2 cent sales tax uh, specific to transit um, if they can get at least 70% of the population represented in cities to agree to put it on the ballot. Uh, that's a high hurdle and they're currently debating that right now. Uh, Gwinnett County had some specific provisions, so you've heard that Gwinnett is planning to hold a referendum to actually join the MARTA system in March of next year. Uh, there's some language in House Bill 930 that Gwinnett County was seeking uh, that gives them sort of a comfort level with putting this on the ballot uh, next year. And so it was important to Gwinnett County that this bill pass because they, they needed that language. Um, if Gwinnett County does do that, there will be an official jurisdiction within the MARTA system, which means that they will be levying a full 1% sales tax for transit for the length of time of the current MARTA tax, which is through the year 2057, uh, which consistently gets extended uh, by the local governments. Um, additionally, the House Bill 930 said that if Gwinnett joins MARTA, uh, or makes the decision to join MARTA this year, which they did um, before the referendum anyway, that they would get an extra MARTA board seat. So they would have three MARTA board members uh, if they join uh, via referendum in March. And then Cobb County, uh, if you thought the process for electing ATL board members was complicated, you should see Cobb County has to do to uh, put a transit sales tax on the ballot. Uh, but if they can get their county commissioners and their legislative delegation to agree on boundaries of a district, then they can put that on the ballot for a sales tax that the sales tax would be collected only within that district. Um, if they do all that by December 1st of 2019, then they can put a referendum on the ballot. Now, they also have the means to put a countywide referendum on the ballot for transit, uh, which would be sort of under the existing MARTA Act and the way it's currently configured. <coughs> there are other counties in the region that are talk actively talking about transit. Douglas County is planning to start up a new bus system. Um, Henry County is also planning to start up a new bus system. 
So it's not just the sort of core five counties that, that you think of when you're thinking about transit but or in the region. There's a lot of activity and discussion about transit all over the place. So one big component of the bill, as I mentioned, was branding. So the bill actually requires, I mean, it basically says the ATL is our new brand. Uh, it's fairly unusual for legislation to contain a branding requirement in it, but it does. Um, it's specific with regard to MARTA, and it says that if you have a MARTA asset worth more than $250,000, which is basically a bus or a rail car or anything of that nature, that after January of next year, it has to include the logo and branding of the ATL on it. So we're currently in talks with them about exactly what that looks like. I think Marta would like it to be a small sticker on the back of a bus. Um, but we're, we're kind of, you know, having some discussions about what that should be. And then after January 2023, uh, all Marta property has to be branded with the ATL. So there's going to be an ongoing discussion, I think, about how that is going to come to fruition. Uh, we have, ATL has issued an RFP uh, and actually made in a, a tentative award to a branding consultant to sort of help us figure out all this, you know, what does it look like on a bus, what does it look like on a train, um, how is the best implementation for, for various vehicles, um, you know, that kind of thing. And we should have a logo, uh, an official logo, at least by December when we have a board. So we want a board to be able to approve the logo. So you probably have questions about how does this work with all the, all the entities that are out there right now. Uh, Marta will remain uh, the operator of all heavy rail in the region. Uh, and then any contracts that Marta has with, as, with regard to their funding that they receive from Fulton, DeKalb, Atlanta, and Clayton, uh, the 1% or 1.5% sales tax, uh, those are left intact. So the ATL doesn't affect that. Um, Greta and CERTA also remain so the express commuter buses that I mentioned and the managed lane program and the Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank, all of those things that are currently run through either CERTA or Greta, uh, those will remain ongoing. And then ARC currently, you know, it, it'll remain involved in the transit and transportation planning process because it's designated so by federal law. So we'll be working closely with ARC as well. And then finally, I'll just mention that we're kind of seeing the ATL as a place where we can have discussions about future transportation technologies and how ride share companies and bike share and scooters that are left on every sidewalk in downtown Atlanta, uh, things of this nature, how all that can interact with transit and interact to create a more seamless experience for the user. Um, and so we're kind of seeing ourselves as more of a mobility agency more than just transit. Uh, so in the future, we kind of want to be the home of uh, how we're going to address transportation mobility moving forward. We have a new website, so I'd encourage you to visit that, atltransit.ga.gov. And uh, this is our temporary logo, which some people have said should be our permanent one, but uh, we just hired a consultant for that. So uh, here's my contact information. I'd be glad to uh, talk to any of you if you ever have questions, so, or if you have questions now. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Any questions? Do we have any questions? No questions? Yeah, there's, there's one last one. Uh, is there any consideration of a public utility to be involved in this ETL region? Like a, like a Georgia Power, yes, for instance? Yeah, I mean, there could be a public utility. It hasn't been raised at this point, but as you know, Georgia Power operated the streetcar for you know yeah. the early part of the century. So, um, so certainly there's precedent. But uh, recently, there hasn't been really been discussion of that. Um, but our new chair now works for Georgia Power, so I guess there are if there are discussions, you know, sure. they'll be well positioned. Because the public utility doesn't depend on taxes. Right. Correct. Very good. Well, thank you all for having me.
All right, some last minute announcements, kind of go over, over a few things that we went over this morning. Our next monthly meeting will actually be on November 14th. It's a little bit earlier. We normally do the last Wednesday, but because of the holidays and whatnot, we're gonna bump that up a couple of weeks. That is for the ITS awards and scholarships. ITS awards nominations are due by the end of the week. Scholarships, October 14th. Next social event, October 25th, it'll be trivia. And then the ITS 5C Summit, October 7th through the 10th in Jacksonville. Registration is open for that. Uh, the Career Connections at Gwinnett County Schools, October 16th. If you're interested in that, come see me. And lastly, a little plug for that conference chair for our 2019 annual meeting. If anyone is interested, um, come talk to me, and we'll get the ball rolling on that. But thank you all for coming, and have a great week.